Hey everybody, welcome back to the RGR Football Channel here Wednesday, another film room for you guys from the Denver Broncos game last Saturday. And we know that the Chiefs have the Steelers coming up, okay? That's pretty front cut and dry, and we all know Sunday Night Football, things are going to be, you know, prime time, that kind of thing. But I feel like this Chiefs team came out against the Broncos in a game that I thought they were going to actually show up a little bit, be a little PO'd about how they handled the, the Bengals, how the Bengals just kind of took that game over and were able to win that game. I thought they'd have a little bit more energy. And they came out flat. That tells me a little bit about the mentality of this defense, of this team, excuse me. I know that going into the postseason, things change mentally, okay? But that mental ability to continuously underestimate your opponent is something that can really, really impact the game. We saw it against the Broncos. They came out flat. They got down to Drew Locke-led Broncos team. They had nothing to lose. They were just playing in the last game. I'm trying to play spoiler in the terms of seeding, okay? Get some confidence going to the offseason, whatever, what, what have you. And there were plays along the way that, you know, I think that rejuvenated the team, that added some energy, got some players going. And that's what this whole film room is about. How you can create some, some energy, some spark, if you will, in the game itself from plays or players. And that's what, like I said, that's what we're going to go over today. There were a lot of different spark plug type plays that energize the team that were able to allow them to stay in this game and come out with a victory we will get to the biggest play obviously on the defensive side of the ball at the very end but i wanted to talk about some players that can generate some energy and some spark to this team that don't get and they haven't been involved a ton this year in terms of generating those big plays but let's go ahead and get into it because this is going to be a lot of fun it's a different way of approaching some of the film aspect and i think that you guys are really going to enjoy it so this very first one is one of my favorite plays because we haven't seen it at all in McCall Hardman's career. We've not seen him use what he did in high school, the quarterback in Georgia. He was a quarterback. I don't know if he was in Georgia, but he did play quarterback in high school, but transferred to Georgia, or excuse me, committed to Georgia, became a defensive back, and then became a wide receiver. So obviously you see you have uh, him out here as the quarterback in the Wildcat formation with... Derek Gore, okay? So this is just a read option. That's all this is. But you're going to notice the defense really not respect McCall Hardman's ability to run the ball in between the tackles, which I get. He's a smaller guy. But as we see the play come forward, like, watch this. This is a, a parting of ways because you think he's going to try and take it to the outside, right? He's a speed guy. He wants to get to the outside. So you part defense, defense, parting this way, and that leaves exactly what the Chiefs want. They got Polars coming around, and they block this beautifully. And if McCole Hartman doesn't trip over big, big Orlando Brown here, this is a hauser. This is a house call. Like, this is gone. They blocked it beautifully. They anticipated what the Broncos were going to see up front. And this really got McCole feeling it. This is something I expect to see more of in the postseason. But the, the, the big thing here for me is getting his confidence level up. McColl has not been a consistent producer this year. He has had 80 targets, I will say. But he hasn't been the downfield threat. Now, Tyree Kill hasn't been a downfield threat this year either. But the idea of them is what has forced teams to change the way that they play. McColl still has some issues running his routes, okay? He's still not on the field exactly where he needs to be. But he is 23, and I think that right now going into the postseason... The Chiefs are using what he does best to create big plays, create some confidence for him, and really allow him to thrive. This is the beautifully executed blocking scheme to create him. Just get a little bit further down there and really let McColl hit his stride. And that's a touchdown. Just a little bit more, man. He's gone. Those are those kind of plays in game. Look at the way he gets up. He's pumped up. He only gets like 11, 12 yards on the play. But still, you generate some positivity for yourself, and you get yourself hyped up. The very next play, um, Mahomes actually went back to him. Unfortunately, the play, uh, the throw got went over his head a little bit. But still, there's confidence growing in McCole Hardman, and I think that that's only good for this team because Tyreek Hill, he's going to have an injury in the first week of, this, of the postseason. He could be carrying that throughout the postseason so using McCole Hardman with these wildcat looks with the quick bubble screens that we're going to see 
as well in this in in this breakdown is really imperative to getting speed on the field and everywhere. Another another place you can find speed is Jarek McKinnon. This guy is actual spark plug because of the way he plays running back. He definitely does not shy away from contact. We've seen him in a little bit of a some of his time here, but this is just it's a third and seven, it's a third and long play, and the Denver Broncos just say, look, we're going to let you have whatever you want underneath. We're just not going to let you throw it into the end zone. And what that does is, yeah, it gives Jarek McKinnon all of this space. And as we know, we've seen Jarek McKinnon in a couple different places, most recently in San Francisco last year, where he had some really good games in between the injuries that he sustained with the 49ers. And this is just him being a spark plug generating a, a touchdown out of something that shouldn't really happen for a defense making multiple defenders miss and then finishing through contact with power boom lower that shoulder that's exactly what you want to see from a running back in in the open field trying to score get low impact the defender with your shoulder pads don't let him hit you you hit him and you can get into the end zone this is the kind of play that this team needs to see, that we need to see going into the postseason, because we know that the Chiefs running backs have not been up, that they haven't lived up to circumstance. Okay, they all three of them outside of Jarek McKinnon have limited speed upside, limited quickness. And we're seeing with McKinnon the reason that they brought him in, the guy that I saw during training camp, and a guy that I was pretty excited as being not just the, the pass catching back, but a guy who can bring this juice level, this type of speed, athleticism, and power to the running back position. I wouldn't be surprised to see him get more play as the postseason comes along. Now, Patrick Mahomes is a generational quarterback. We all know. And we all kind of take for granted sometimes, myself included, the ability he has with his, his legs. He's not a Josh Allen. He's not Lamar Jackson. He's not a lot of these other guys either. But he is a very gifted athlete. I think a lot of us forget that because he's a quarterback. And I know that I'm t not talking to everybody. We all have different ways that we handle this. But I think you can handle hand a lot of compliments to Bobby Strope for how they've handled this. And how they've created this type of wiggle in a quarterback who I, I wouldn't say he's the best athlete in the league or quarterback. When someone may not be open. When your pocket's collapsing a little bit. When... You're looking in one place and someone comes open on the other side of the field and Mahomes doesn't see it. That happens a lot because that's the nature of football. You're feeling so many different things at one time. And I think that him being able to generate more plays with his legs down the stretch here that we've seen specifically in this game, he's getting more comfortable outside of the pocket, moving within the pocket as well, coming up, coming out, all of these different things. He's creating and generating plays with his legs, with his buying time. And all of it can really encapsulate how this team can find big plays and get some energy when they're not feeling it at their at their peak really really bad game to watch all around it, no one was really feeling a lot of this game to begin with but this is one of those Patrick Mahomes look make something happen okay and Byron Pringle does a great job just sitting in the open field okay he was like look I, you guys all want to travel with him I'm gonna go the opposite way and I'm gonna find a spot a soft spot where I know my quarterback can get me the ball that's so. This is something that shouldn't be able to happen. We've talked about it a lot. There's only probably three quarterbacks in the NFL that can make this play consistently. And I know that you're, he's moving to his left. There's no one around him. But if that, that, that ball is traveling a little bit slower, that might get picked off. It might the defender might get there at the mesh point. But this is also a generating a, a big play generating type of thing because even though it's a first down, that could have been a sack. Maybe should have been a sack and. It turns into a first down. So energy goes up when you see your quarterback do this kind of stuff as well. And then Byron Pringle fighting after the catch. Maybe a little bit hesitant on the run after ability there. He probably should have just continually ran, or ran around to the sideline a little bit and accelerated. But being able to create the first down does a good job finding that space. Mahomes does a great job finding him, locating him, and getting him the ball. These types of plays continue and, and don't put you in bad situations instead of third and long maybe a third and even longer with a sack you get yourself on a first down and you can possibly to get a field goal or a touchdown like that's the type of play and this offensive line i know that they've had some issues 
a crop up a little bit, but I think that overall Mahomes is getting a better feel for the talent of this offensive line, what they're what they're able to do. And you know, Trey Smith just kind of gets off on the wrong foot, and Andrew Wiley does a lets the guy inside a little bit too much. But Mahomes again feeling the pressure, getting outside by still making guys miss, and then just laser beam to Byron Pringle for a first down. That's the kind of play. All these effort, all these plays really give a spark to the offense and to the team in general. I really think that that's true in all kinds of formats. And then, like I said, if we get back to these McColl Hardman plays, this is one of those doing the same thing but not <laughs> kind of plays where they've ran that bubble screen where they just get it out to him already in the slot. Uh, and typically what you're seeing from this kind of play here is you'll have receiver out wide. And then you'll just motion McCall Hardman from this side into the slot. And what this does is it allows Mahomes to have a look and say, okay, where are my defenders? Where are they doing? They're playing off. They're playing off. I'm going to throw this. If they're playing up here, I'm probably not going to throw it. And it gives that RPO look. But this is a completely different type of feel to it because you're condensed here. So you know you can get the ball out to, this, to space here. You're just going to allow guys to pull out and create a running lane for McCall Hardman. And that it creates a difficult problem for the, the Broncos defenders because they have to get there, and they could all trip over each other. They have to get there without bumping into each other. If they bump each other, and they can create the big play. And that's kind of what happens here is you're going to see that McCall Hardman, you know, able to catch the ball, and this is the kind of space you're going to get because it allows, you know, it allows him to catch the ball and then react. Already doing a good job blocking here. Let Travis Kelsey travel. And then, look, this guy has to work around him to get into the space. It's a very big play near the end of the game that allowed the Chiefs to seal it. And they knew what they had in this whole play. Like, yeah, I think even McCall Hardman was like, look, I got this. Like, I see where everybody is. There's all up to the line of scrimmage. Like, they're within f most of the defenders are within five yards of the ball, Okay. That's huge, huge key to the offense. Get the ball out wide because they all have to get out there, okay? That's how they were able to do that. They recognized it, and Mahomes has the ability, I think, to address this, diagnose it, and play it this way exactly. Like, they did a great job of understanding the situation, what the defense would do, and then making the play happen. So I'm really excited about what we're seeing going forward from this team in terms of generating those plays and continuing to use their players and their weapons in the best formats and this is the game ceiling touchdown from nick bolton as we all know it was so insane to see melvin ingram just get in the backfield and that was the play you know nick bolton is exactly what i thought he would be at the nfl level get him going downhill the guy can can change a dynamic of a game he can deliver a big hit he can change these kind of things but this play doesn't happen without Melvin Ingram. Melvin Ingram had been doing this all game where he's just kind of itching and waiting. And seeing tight ends not getting off, off the ball, he knows that he's going to get. This is a second down. This isn't exactly like a you know a third down where you know you have to get off the ball. It's a second down. It's a sh second is short, actually. And they don't get off the ball fast enough. Look at this guy. The ball's been snapped. Everybody else is up, and this tight end is still, like, waiting. Ingram knows. I'm just going to shoot in here. They're going to run the ball. I am I know what they're doing. Just right by him. Boom. Done. I can't I can't tell you the ecstatic and the, the, the face that I made when I saw that ball pop out of Melvin Gordon's hands. Like, that was so much fun to see Ingram, who had been taking those chances a lot in this game, to be able to get back there. And then Nick Bolton coming off the backside, being in the right position. Like, just being in the right spot. Knows that Drew Locke isn't going to tackle him. Right there where you had that trip up, like, make sure you don't, you know, don't hurt yourself. Find that football, spin off of him, and go. This is the kind of play that you want to see from Nick Bolton. Get some generating, uh, some downhill ability from the, the guy, and he's going to, do great things he does have speed downhill he's able to find the ball i think a little bit better than he could early in the season 
But again, Melvin in- Melvin Ingram making that play is I think I think it's pretty huge for the confidence of the defense going forward because in that game they hadn't been generating turnovers. Drew Locke was taking care of the ball and they they weren't creating turnovers like they had earlier in this season and through that stretch run that you saw. So it, it's a whole different dynamic I think when you're able to uh, to really put a defense in that position when you're up against the the wall constantly and you're able to come away with a turnover. And this was like the second time and the last two meetings that they've seen where the Broncos drove like 80 plus yards or 70 plus yards and ended with no points. That first one, that first one was when Teddy Bridgewater brought up Teddy Bridgewater was the quarterback a few uh, weeks ago. And then this one where Drew Locke comes in, I think he played a pretty good game and then just (laughs) loses it because they couldn't punch it in. That's gotta be pretty disheartening for a guy who was trying to, you know, beat, his favorite team growing up. Like, I got... It sucks for Drew Locke. I, I don't have anything against Drew Locke. But, as we all know, he's not a Kansas City Chiefs. He's Denver Broncos. So, that really kind of throws a wrench in that whole thing. But, to my point, these these plays galvanize the team. If you can create energy within the game that you're not having the best energy level in, you can really shift the dynamic of how you end up playing. Because the Chiefs got close. We saw it was 21-20. to 20. They were able to create some points, put them on the board, and you have situations where the Broncos were threatening. The Broncos' defense is good. Like It's not a bad defense by any stretch, and they were able to create some energy with big plays from Mahomes, from Jarek McKinnon, from McCole Hardman, and some timey, timely plays from Byron Pringle, and then you get the capping touchdown from your defense. Those plays really encapsulate how you can find energy and come back in a game like that. They cannot come out against the Pittsburgh Steelers and play that first half of football that they did against the Broncos. I know that they might be able to get away with it, but you can't keep replicating that. And I think that they're going to look at that game and say, look, we had some plays here and there that they they did well, some things we executed well, but there was no fire, no energy. I think they'll come out on Sunday night. They'll have more energy. They're going to get hopefully get out to an early lead and be able to salt that game away and look forward to the divisional round. As we all know, this game it's the playoffs. Anything can happen in the NFL. We've seen it time and time again, and I don't rule anything out, even with the Steelers. So if you guys have any questions, any comments, concerns, put them in the comments section down below. You can always hit me up on Twitter at inharmsway19. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. Ryan and Seth will have the Chief in the North video. Make sure you guys are tuning into the RGR Football Channel every week as we go through the postseason. It's going to be a lot of fun. You guys have a great day. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.